It's now finally time for the episode of Can Yes Fix It? And this is that episode where you guys send in your broken parts, all those parts that are playing up and being a little bit janky in that they probably don't post properly or something's a little bit wrong that makes it work normally in your gaming PC. And then you send it over to me and I do even more janky stuff and more unorthodox stuff around here at the Tech Yes Studio to try and get it to work. And since the last episode, there has been so much stuff here on the desk that is built up. Today, we're gonna break it into two parts for this uh, Can Yes Fix It episode since we've got a heap of motherboards that have come in. In total, there's over 13 boards and 12 of them are really dirty and they're saying that they don't pose properly when I got them in. And six of those boards are actually the same type of H97 as rock board. And then we've got a few variated models from anything from B85 to H55. So what we're gonna do right now is take off all the heat sinks on these motherboards because I'm gonna to attempt to do something that I've never done before and that's get out a brush and also once the heat sinks are off, quickly hose down these boards and give them some very quick and efficient tech yes loving to make sure all the grime and all the dirt is off these boards. And of course, I'll be removing all the CMOS batteries out of these boards to make sure there's no electric current going through them. However, the whole process of uh, water on your computer parts is that you don't have any electric current going through them. Because if you do, since that water is usually contaminated, it will usually then conduct electricity, which can destroy your PC parts. But since these motherboards are going to have no electric current going through them, then the water essentially is going to do nothing as long as it's all dried up before we then try to boot the uh, motherboard again. And of course, if that motherboard does end up booting properly after doing some tech yes loving in this manner, then we will give it some multi-purpose spray to make sure it has a long life and it's protected against outside contaminants in the air. But tomorrow we'll get onto these graphics cards as well as a dual Xeon system with its own unique DDR3 memory systems. So yes, that's right. This DDR3 stick of memory here actually has a different layout to the standard DDR3 memory sticks that you see. And it's intended for this motherboard here which uh, supports dual Xeons on the X58 platform. And then of course we have some CPUs, RAM, and busted down graphics cards, but we will test those tomorrow because today's video is dedicated to getting these motherboards up and working. So let's take all the heat sinks off now and then start the hosing. And this is definitely one of those exceptions where it's actually a good time to be getting hosed. So I've just cleaned up the first six motherboards here, waiting for them to dry, and then we're gonna get on to the next six motherboards right here. Oh uh, yeah, Dadman, what do you think of washing motherboards? 
I think it's a fantastic idea. I keep myself clean. You might as well keep the motherboard clean. You know, so so uh, to stop this sink getting scratched up, put down some soft materials, but you can really see the amount of dirt came off the motherboards, the first six that we've cleaned. And we've just got another six to clean up now because these are being left to dry. And I gotta say this type of method, it does really give it a nice clean shine though. There is one like pretty bad sort of thing to be aware of and we'll talk about that later. It's got to do with obviously using uh, water out of the tap and rust, but uh, let's clean up the other six boards and then start drying them off and then we'll get around to testing it and then we'll talk. So we now have 12 motherboards all cleaned up and dried off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave them overnight so they can drive off fully, make sure there's just nothing wrong. But we can just see all the dirt that's come off these motherboards is actually quite substantial. So <laughs> that was surprising. The good old washing trick does look like it's uh, at least decent so far in that it's good for cleaning a whole lot of boards at once, but we'll only find out in the morning once they're fully dried off if they do indeed work. So uh, this first motherboard here, we've tried tinkering with everything, tried all different memory slots, uh, even tried replacing the BIOS with another BIOS. And we can see here the problem with this board is, is that uh, one of these CPU fan headers is actually knocked out. So this has most likely been the result of a, um, a lightning strike or something like that. So something's just completely knocked out on this motherboard. So the first motherboard, unfortunately, doesn't work, but we're gonna try the next one. And this is what I am talking about right here. This board has gone to Tech Yes Water World and it has come back with a big smile on its face. And we did have to bend two pins back as well, but they were easy bends. And now we have one motherboard out of the four, which is working so far. And another thing we're gonna do right now is now give it some multi-purpose spray, give it an additional layer of Tech Yes loving. Uh, so none of that water wash that we did yesterday incurs any sort of long-term rust or anything like that. But I'm super happy because this is a really nice board as well. And it just means the success train is only starting up now. And welcome to board number two, where Tech Yes Waterworld 
has found another winner. Booyah! And uh, we got one of these fatality boards working. Finally. Finally. This is a miracle. Uh, but to be fair, with this one right here, in order to get it working, I believe I just changing the BIOS from A to B fix that one. So sometimes your BIOS chips can, I don't know, over time they can just get faulty. I think that's what happened with this board. And it's all working now 100%. So we're gonna give it now a coat of multi-purpose spray, just like the other two working boards. And then we're gonna move on to the last few boards to go through. So we've now got the second fatality board working in a row and I may have just figured out the trick to getting these to work and something I never thought of before until I remembered um, like an old car battery thing where I had a car and it just wouldn't start one time properly. I took the battery out and I cleaned all the ends down and got all the corrosion off and uh, then it booted again and I noticed a lot of these BIOS uh, chips here with the teeth, they've got that same sort of uh, like I don't know what it's called like acid buildup on the teeth of the BIOS chip so cleaning that off and then putting it back in this time around has worked So basically you can hear, uh, besides my voice, a really loud noise, that's the graphics card fan. And that's just going full ball straight from the get-go. And the reason it's doing that is because the BIOS selection light isn't even coming on underneath. And uh, so this thing's not even initializing the BIOS to get to post, uh, which is a problem with actually quite a few of these boards. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's get through the rest of the boards and see what is working and what's not. So now here is the final tally. We've got eight boards down here that do not work. And uh, that Gigabyte one was so close to working, but in the end, it was just kind of like this Intel board right here. They both started tripping out. And you can see with the Intel board that had this blue light that was coming in and out of existence, which means that something's just gone on the motherboard. No matter cleaning or a tech yes loving is gonna bring that back to life. But what we've got on here on the top shelf is now four motherboards that are back and working so i'm going to put the heat sinks back on them but at least four out of 12 uh, considering all these boards were sent to me and i know they're all left with messages to say that they were not working so i'm pretty glad with the success rate at least today that we've got with uh now four of these motherboards working as opposed to zero when we started. But we're gonna move over now to conclusion for part one because there is a few things to discuss, especially with these ASRock boards in this uh, era. So we're looking back now at these motherboards and a lot of those uh, ASRock Fatality boards did not simply even get to the bit where they should be posting the LED light on the BIOS selection switch. And that's got to do with a problem around the fourth gen with some ASRock boards, I believe. This is only from what I've seen in my experience. 
And that is, uh, I had a B85, which I put in my mom's computer, and one of the hard drives after old age just gave out. And then I replaced the hard drive in that computer. And after I replaced the hard drive, I, the computer wouldn't start again. And I was thinking to myself, what is going on here? Like, whoa. And so I started reseeding the memory, which is the first thing usually I do. And um, it took me about 10 tries on that B85 motherboard of reseeding the memory to finally get the computer to work again. And then I told my mom after that, look, just do not touch this thing. Don't even touch the computer. Like when you press the power button, just press it. So there must be something on these uh, fourth generation ASRock motherboards, especially the budget line, because I think the Fatality has the same PCB as the B85 Pro 4 or something. I think that's the board I used. And so what, what you've got when you've got a uh, thin PCB, I think they're like four layer PCBs, is that you do have to be very careful with them, but over time as well, I believe the trace or the integrity of the traces can diminish to the point where they are that sensitive and that even if you do something very minor, it can set the board off and it doesn't work properly. And so what we saw with these uh, H97 performance boards, and there was an, also an H87 in there, is that the washing and getting all the dirt off, that didn't really make a difference. It was mainly, I guess, cleaning up the BIOS chip in one of them that did fix one of the boards legitimately. But I think at the end of the day, a lot of the boards that didn't work, didn't work because they were just faulty and not fixable from a fixable standpoint to begin with. And so that kind of, um, I mean, that's just what it is. It's just how it is. I go through the boards and if they got potential, then I'll go back and I'll clean them again and I'll go through them again. And I even did that with some of the BIOS chips on these boards, but they just did not work. They wouldn't even give out a signal. So some of the traces I believe on this PCB are just shot to the point where it can't even initialize the BIOS chip. And uh, that's just the way it is. So, I mean, thanks for sending those out. Um, that was from a local computer store that sent me out a box of these boards and said that they came back faulty. So all the boards in today's video that we're working with were faulty to begin with. And so the fact that I got four of them to go again, that was, I was really happy with that. That Gigabyte board, so close to working, but at the end of the day, that's what happens when pins are just too far bent. Um, usually when they're bent a little bit, you can bend them back with ease and the board will work again. But some of these pins were so far bent to the point where you try and bend them back, they're just gonna snap off because now they're like, they're instead of being bent like that way, they're bent in reverse angle and then you pull them back and they just snap off. And that's happened, um, it really happens because bending pins in that manner is extremely difficult to begin with. I, I believe, I, I don't even know how you bend pins like that. It, the only thing I could think of is someone's literally like dropped a CPU and then it's hit the pin so hard that it's bent them so bad. That's like, I don't know if there's any other way because yeah, I don't know because I have seen it there. <laughs> All right, I'll give you guys a little bit of a story with the hard offs. Like I have seen it the hard offs in the past. Some of those pins have been mangled to the point where I know it's these young kids going through and they're like literally just pressing the pins down and even then, those pins don't look as bent as some of the pins that I saw on today's motherboard where it must have been like a really hard impact. Anyway, that aside, we did taste success, but I would have liked to have tasted a bit more success, especially since I did go through all the hassle of washing these boards up, which I will admit does make the boards look really clean, especially after that, if you use the multi-purpose spray on top of that, You've got a board that like literally looks brand new. So I'm happy with the way that the four boards turned out after they got the wash, after they got the Tech S loving. But one thing I will stress again is that do not wash any parts that have electricity stored in them. So things like a power supply, make sure you keep that thing away from water period, even if it's switched off and even if you've drained it. I mean, I wouldn't even go there. Uh, things like a uh, keyboards and mice, if they've got onboard chips that uh, carry an electrical current and store memory, for instance, don't put them anywhere near water and uh, don't put them anywhere near brake cleaner, or even electrical contact cleaner. Uh, that's one important thing to do is electrical contact cleaner, even though it's a good, it's meant for electronics, it's still recommended to not spray it on live electronics. So one thing to come out of this is with the motherboards, they're all turned off, they're all decharged. And so you can wash them and you can clean them up and then they will look like new again. But you gotta keep in mind that there is that element of rust 
that can build up over time because the water's contaminated coming out of the tap. That can have traces of whatever minerals in them. And especially if you live close to the beach, for example, here on the Gold Coast, uh, that can absorb some of the salt from uh, the breeze, which comes from the ocean. And then your parts will really rust out extremely quickly. So water can act really fast in that manner. So it is really important if you're washing parts to then make sure the water is dried off straight away. Though I have heard of other YouTubers putting PC parts in the dishwasher. Uh, me personally, I don't like to mix uh, mechanical stuff with uh, editable foods. They just don't mix together, even if it's in the same place where they get cleaned. That's just me personally. Uh, do let us know though, what you guys think in the comment section below about some of the cleanup methods. And have you had any experience with these H97 boards like I had here today, where those bias lights aren't even coming on? And another thing is too, I do have these eight boards here. If someone is local and they've got skills in soldering and replacing chips and they think they wanna have a crack, then uh, just send me a message and yeah, you can come and pick all these boards up and have a go at them. Cause I know there's some people in the comments that are like, hey dude, make sure you don't chuck them out. Um, and the thing is, I'm not gonna post them because the postage is so expensive that it'll be worth more than the motherboards themselves. But with that aside, we do have a few messages from the viewers here for the Can Yes Fix It. And the uh, first was from Sena Pratama. He said he uh, sent in an AM4 ITX motherboard and there was spilled coolant around the CPU socket and it will still boot, but under load, it would hard reset. And he says he loves the channel, keep up the good work and inspires me to search for Gumtree for bargains. So thanks so much for that B350 motherboard. I, this is the thing, I haven't done this in so long and nine months that I believe I fixed that board up by just uh, spraying some multi-purpose spray on and then cleaning it down and then updating the BIOS and it worked 100% again. So uh, thanks for that one. And also we've got from Matt, he says, uh, hello Brian, I've been watching your channel for a while now. Really appreciate and enjoy your personality and the content. Hopefully you can find a use for some of these older parts. And uh, so thanks a lot for that, Matt. Really appreciate any uh, parts that get sent in from you guys. And then the last one here is um, from Greece. So the person didn't leave a name, uh, but the message is really funny anyway. It says, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Athens, Greece. Keep making videos and don't bash 775. So they're talking about LGA 775 and I don't really bash it. It's just that I get so much frustration out of LGA 775, it's not funny. I find usually like one in two builds that I do will have some weird problem that is just so frustrating, whether it's a board that's just too old and something's gone faulty, or it's just some compatibility issue where I just do not want to deal with it anymore. And so that's the reason sort of I went off and switched off LGA 775. It just got really frustrating really quickly. But I do think they're really good. Um, if you can get one working and in pristine condition with eight gigabytes of DDR2 and like even like a GTX 1050 or something, you can still have a decent gaming PC to this date. It's just for me personally looking through it and spending all the time. And that's the thing, time is something that I have to place a value on in my life. Otherwise I will not have no life. And so that's why I've kind of uh, gravitated away from LGA 775. But anyway guys, before we get on out of here, we've got the question of the day, which comes from Joseph Wilkinson. And they ask, what's the best value case available in the US? I've been looking for a case that's relatively low priced, but still looks good with clear side panels and RGB fans. I wasn't able to find the case Brian used in the bid online. So um, basically in the US, I'm actually not too sure what the best go-to case is. Maybe some of the viewers in the US who regularly buy the RGB cases with fans in them, can give you some recommendations. But from just taking a quick look on Amazon, there are two cases that I would personally be picking if I was doing builds over there, and that would be the Fractal Design Focus G, especially in the white, because it's got included white LED fans, and it also has some pretty good cooling performance, looks really good out of the box. And then there's the uh, Thermaltec V200, which actually comes included with RGB fans and the build quality is decent though. The airflow on both these cases are mediocre, so don't really go stuffing like a 2080 Ti or anything in there, but something like an RX 5700 in both these cases will be absolutely fine. And on top of that, if you're in Australia, of course, uh, I go to MSY for a lot of those budget cases where they come in at like 70 Aussie dollars, which is like 50 USD, and they come with a controller, four RGB fans. And the good thing is they're not, um, I'm gonna say this is actually a good thing because if you're dealing with a lot of older used hardware, you don't have the ARGB headers. And so they've got their own controller on board. And so they're not ARGB 
but they've just got the remote with them and it really just makes life simple uh, because a lot of the newer boards, even some of the newer boards, don't even have those ARGB headers if they're budget newer boards. But anyway, that aside, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Make sure you stay tuned for part two, where we're gonna be going through some gravity cards with that dual socket motherboard to test out some RAM and some CPUs too, and that graphics card, the R9-390X. And that's a bit of a wrap for today. If you guys have stayed this far and you're still enjoying the content and you love what we do around Tech Yes City, be sure to hit that sub button if you're not subbed already. Ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops in your sub box. And I do apologize, it has been a long time since we have done a Can Yes Fix It, but I'll put the PO box up here and also in the description for you guys. If you got some broken parts and you wanna see me have a crack at them, then you know where to send it. And I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.